Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Hi and welcome to another tutorial on creating a car controller using Wheel Collider physics. Now creating a car controller is little different than creating a character controller. Generally in a character controller we try to move the whole character and we animate the character's body parts so that it looks like it's moving. But in case of a car, we don't move the whole car as it is. So in case of the car, we rotate the wheel collider attached to the car and the car starts moving based on the rotation of the wheel collider. And we also update the transform of the wheel based on the rotation of the wheel collider. So as the first step, you need a car for creating a car controller. So if you don't have one, you can download it from Unity Asset Store. And the scene that you're seeing here is from a cartoon low poly city light free asset from Unity Asset Store. So you can also download that. I'll leave the link in the description. So we have a car in our scene. So if you zoom in, you can see the wheels are also attached. If you're making the car model from scratch, make sure to make the wheels as separate models so that you'll be able to rotate the wheels separately. If I expand the car's prefab, you can see it has four wheels and a car body. In order to attach a wheel collider, you cannot just directly go and remove the mesh collider and attach a wheel collider. Unity requires the car model to be arranged in a particular fashion so that the wheel colliders work. So let's go to the prefab folder and open up the car prefab. Now the first thing that you will do is select the car and make sure you add a rigid body to it. And the mass of the car can be set to something like 1500 because one is very less for a car. So once that is done, let's add an empty game object and let's call it wheels. And let's drag all these four wheels as children of wheels. Okay. And the next thing that you have to do is delete all the mesh colliders. So let's remove the component and then just duplicate this and let's call this wheel colliders. Now in the wheel colliders, the children of the wheel colliders will be just a transform with a wheel collider and the position of the wheel should match with your actual wheels. So that when the car moves, it looks like the wheels are rotating. So I'm going to remove the mesh filter and the mesh renderer. And then I'm going to add a wheel collider component. So as you can see, there are wheel colliders have appeared here. So for some reason, if you don't see this colliders, this wheel colliders, then there are a few things that you need to check first. Check whether you added the rigid body to the parent game object. If you add it to some other game object, then that might also be the cause. This won't appear. For example, if I just remove the rigid body from here, the wheel colliders will also disappear. So let's go ahead and add the rigid body back. Okay, the wheel colliders have appeared back. And the other thing that you have to check is the gizmos. Click on the gizmos and make sure wheel collider is checked. So that being done, next we'll go into the settings of the wheel collider. So as you can see, the wheel colliders are larger than the wheels. So let's go ahead and reduce the radius. I think point 0.3 should be good. Yeah. So to make sure the wheel collider size is the same as the wheel, reduce the suspension distance to zero. And once you align the wheel collider with the wheel, you can give a small suspension distance. So generally it can be something like 0.08 or 0.05. So I'll give 0.08. So it, it actually depends on how much bounciness you want. And this suspension distance and the suspension spring parameters are going to de decide how much bounciness you want in car. And let's go back to our scene. Save the prefab. Okay, and let's lift the demo car a little bit in the y-axis and let's drop it. So you can see that the car flew away. Now there are a few reasons for that and the most common reason uh, is because of the colliders. So the car body 
has a mesh collider which is intersecting with the wheel collider so let's go ahead and get that component the car body also requires a collider so let's go ahead and add a box collider okay and let's make sure that the box collider is not intersecting with our wheel collider so let's make it a little bit smaller okay not that well this one yeah okay so okay the mass or oh, did not get saved so that was also a reason so let's save it and now let's go back to the scene let's see if the mass was reflected yeah it's fine now and now let's play the game okay so everything is fine so as you can see if the mass is too less the wheels will basically push the car away and if the mass is too high then you won't see any spring action so now our cars collider and the wheel colliders are set next thing we have to do is use a character script to control the movement of the colliders so before that let's just go ahead and experiment with the wheel collider values and see what results we can achieve by increasing the spring and the dampener value so let's go ahead and increase the spring value by two more zeros and increase the suspension distance to 0.12 and let's play the game so not much bouncy but yeah it was little bit better maybe two more yeah and let's play okay so now we have a bouncy car awesome so you can play around with the spring dampener and the suspension distance to basically get the effect that you are looking for and as of now i'll just set everything back to normal so that my car goes back to normal okay so now comes the next part the controller script so let's add it to the prefab itself so let's call it car controller now wheel collider has three important functions that you should know about first is the motor torque the motor torque can be in the positive direction or in the negative direction depending on which direction you want the wheel to rotate then comes the brake torque so if you want to stop the car immediately then you can use the brake torque you can give a bigger value so that the car stops immediately and then comes the steer angle so steer angle is basically the angle by which you want to rotate the car's wheel now if you have seen in a real car the steer angle is only changed on the front wheels but the motor torque can be applied to all four wheels or just to the front wheels so now let's open the script in visual studio for editing so the first thing that we need are the wheel colliders so let's go ahead and say wheel collider and let's make it an array and let's call it wheel call okay now then we need a float which will be our torque so that will be say some hundred okay and then we need another float which will be our angle let's say 45 because i've not seen any cars angle go beyond 45 degrees so yeah depending on how you want your car to move you can just set these angle values so for me i'm going to set the maximum to 45 now what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop and we're going to say int i equal to zero i less than wheel scroll dot dot length and then i plus plus okay and inside the for loop what we're going to do is we're going to just say wheel call of i dot motor torque is equal to so we'll be moving the car based on the keyboard input so if the up and down arrow is pressed we'll be providing a motor torque and if the left and right keys are pressed then we'll be changing this gear angle so we'll be saying input dot get access 
uh, in brackets it will be vertical and that multiplied by our torque so let's go back to unity and test if this is working now let's play the game so if i press the up arrow nothing happens that's because i've not assigned the wheel colliders let's open up the prefab and okay i did a mistake you should have set it as public or you can also do serialize field private so now this should appear here so we, we are having four wheels so let's set it to four and then wheel one wheel two wheel three and wheel four So now if we play our game and press the up arrow, so you can see that the car is moving, but you can see that the wheels are not rotating. So now let's go back to our script. What we need to do is we need to get the wheel transforms. So it will be public transform, it's also an array, and it will be wheels. Okay. After assigning the motor torque, we are also going to say a variable pos, which will be the position, is equal to transform dot position, and we'll make another variable called rot, which will be transform dot rotation. So we are basically creating two variables, position and rotation. The reason is we need to get the position and rotation of the wheel collider and then assign it to the wheels. So in order to get the position and rotation of the wheel collider, there is an inbuilt function. So you can just say wheel call of i dot get world post and in brackets you just say out. First the first variable is your position and then you say out rot. So this function will basically output the position to the pos variable and rotation to the rot variable. Now all that we have to do is we have to take the wheel, which is in wheels of i uh, dot position equal to pos, and then wheels of i dot rotation. equal to rot. So now let's save the script, uh, go back to Unity. Let's play the game. Okay, we forgot to actually assign the wheels. So the wheels are also four in number. And this will be my wheel one, my wheel two, the wheel three, and wheel four. Okay. The view is not good enough for us to see whether the wheel is rotating. So let's go back to the scene, save the model, and make sure this is the and change the game's camera view. So now let's play the game. And if I press the front arrow, so you can see the wheels are rotating. That's awesome. So if I press the back arrow, it goes in the reverse direction. So now we are able to move our car in the front and back direction. The next one is to be able to turn the car. So we need to assign the steer angle to the front wheels. So make sure you don't assign it to the back wheels, but which are our front wheels. So wheel one is a front wheel, wheel two is back, wheel three is front. So wheel one and three are our front wheels. So let's go back to the script. So now what we need to do, we don't need the start function, so let's delete it, okay. So we need to check if i is equal to equal to one or i is equal to equal to three, because one and, I think it should be zero and two, yeah, zero and two. If that is the case, then you need to assign the steer angles to the 
different fields. So let's go ahead and say fields call of i dot strando is equal to input dot get access and the access is going to be horizontal this time and we are going to multiply that with the angle okay so make sure you do this before you assign the position so let's just cut it from here and paste it after this so now let's save the script go back to unity and see if we are able to turn our car okay let's play the game and it's going front yeah it's able to turn that's awesome now let's go back and yeah wow. So if I am going in the front direction and press the back key, it takes some time for the car to actually stop and then come in the reverse direction. So in order to solve that issue, we'll apply a brake torque to stop the car immediately. So let's go ahead and let's say if input dot get e down. Let's use the space bar for break and let's say key code dot space. If the space bar is pressed, then we're going to apply for each variable i in wheels call. We're going to say i dot break torque equal to 1000 maybe we'll give a bigger value 2000 yeah so now if we press the space bar the car should break okay let's hit the play button let's go back okay and i hit the space bar the car breaks that's awesome okay the car is not moving front the reason is you also need to reset the brake force because it will be continuously applied input dot get any sorry any key down and in that condition we are going to check if the if it's a space bar so let me raise this okay else if it is not a space bar we're going to set the brake torque sorry we're going to set the brake torque to zero okay let's play the game and if i go back and hit the space key the car stops then i can come in forward direction Right, the space key awesome so yeah the braking works i'm able to move forward i'm able to turn i'm able to reverse my car so now i'm ready to make a car racing game so that's it for the tutorial if you have any other question or you are having any other issues you can leave a comment below and if you're looking for the script, it is available in Vinix Studio. The link is there in the description. You can just copy paste and, and have your car controller ready to use. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.